Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm excited. I love it when a shot like that comes together. Today we're going to jump into the world of miniaturization, tilt shift, claymation, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a miniature effect on your film and all you need is four different things to think about. One is the speed of your shots. That could be time lapse, it could be just sped up film, whatever you want to do with it that you'll get those clips together. Then you just want to consider the height and the angle of your, your gimbal when you're shooting on the subject. And then you're gonna to have to add some blur and then some color and saturation as well. So we're gonna take all four of those elements and put them into Final Cut Pro. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are, we're in Final Cut Pro and I've got two different clips that I wanna show you guys. One of these is a good clip. The other one I thought was gonna be a good clip and this is gonna be an example of um, what doesn't work well. So first thing you want to do is speed up the clip eight times faster makes it a seven second clip. Alright so let's zoom into that one a bit. So you've got it sped up. Next thing you want to go into the effects tab over here <clears throat> on the right hand side and you want to look under the blur category and what you want to choose, you could either choose focus or Gaussian blur, it doesn't really matter, but um, for this one I'm just going to choose Gaussian blur and we're just going to drag that and put it right on top of the video clip. So as you can see here everything in your screen is now blurred out and that's exactly what you want to start with. So then you go up here to the top right and you want to click this little link here to bring up the inspector piece of it. Right, so now you have the Gaussian blur and then on this top tab here if you hover over that it'll say do you want to apply a shape or a color mask so you want to click that and you want to add a shape mask and so now you've got everything inside the circle is blurred out and then everything outside it is nice and crystal clear so what you want to do is take this top uh, left piece here and kind of make it a rectangle this is not a hard and fast rule but it kind of, kind of seems to me it works the best for most situations but um, but but depending on what you're focusing on, you could you could kind of make that oval, or if you have something in the foreground that's closer than what you want to focus on in the background, you could manipulate that shape a little bit so you're blurring out the you know the parts that need to be blurred out and focusing in on the the part that you want to miniaturize. All right, so now we've got this rectangle built here, and you just want to expand that out across the screen. And then you want to go back up here, hit that same button to add the shape mask, and you're going to do invert mask this time. So that just makes everything the opposite. So now you're getting more towards focusing on the construction area, and then you're kind of blurring out everything beyond that. The reason I chose this clip was because down here at the bottom is you've got this tree right here and so that's a good that's a good thing to blur out because it's going to be right up close to your line of focus but you want to be looking kind of like you're peering down in on this this make-believe world or this miniature type world and so everything that's kind of out of the peripheral of your vision is what's going to be blurred out and then everything close close to the center of your focus is what you want to have the focus of the tilt shift or the miniature world to, to look like all right so we've got that and then what you can do here is you can just bring down the blur lines with these these top and bottom links and you're really just kind of dragging it down and for this clip what I did was I kind of just put the line right above the street up here so that's where it kind of really starts to thicken up the, the blur and then you can kind of move it around there and then on the left hand oh, I'm sorry on the right hand side of the screen the only other thing I'm really changing is the amount and this is just the amount of the blur so so maybe you don't want it to blur that much like it like it is up there at the top and on the bottom so maybe you just want to tone it down so it doesn't look quite so quite so enhanced you know you don't want to give everything away you kind of want to make people like wonder what am I looking like looking at here but you don't want to like totally blur everything out and you don't want to have too harsh of a line where it's you know crystal clear and then it just goes immediately to blur so and that's just up to your preference so I'm gonna <clears throat> just slide this up and down a tad to right about I'm gonna say right about 16 so it looks pretty good to me I'm just gonna play that through 
so it's nice and sped up. See how it's blurred here on the bottom, on the bottom of the screen, and then blurred up here on the top. I think that's perfect. All right. So next, what you want to do is add. Uh, you want to add a little bit of color to the to the scene, and this is to make it look more more miniature world like. So if you think about you know all your you know all the all the play sets that you had when you were a kid, whether it's um, you know Legos or you know, if you had toy trains, Legos, other little play sets like that, they, they all had like brightly colored things. And the reason why I chose the construction is a lot of the toys growing up were like big Tonka trucks and things like that. So big bright yellow trucks. So that's why I chose this as a good example. So what I'm going to do here is just go into the color tab. So I'm just going to go up here, hit this triangle. And I'm going to go to my saturation tab instead of the color tab. And just here on the left uh, left hand side of it, I'm just going to hit the master button here, and I'm just going to make this really bright, like overly bright. It, you know, honestly, see how bright the orange and the yellow is, and you know, so that's like at 85. I could go up to 100. 100 is a little bit too much, but but even if you went down to like 75, all right, that's pretty cool. I mean, look how bright all the orange is. It it kind of looks like a little toy set there. And again, this is a, a seven second clip. I'm going to use probably three seconds of this in the video and it'll just spin through it real quickly. So I like that a lot. So that's perfect to me. It's blurred in the front, it's blurred in the background, and then right in the middle of the screen, it is crystal clear. It's sped up. It's kind of a time lapse. Fast forward, and that's exactly what you want. You kind of want to have the um, that kind of effect in your videos. So, so that's a good example of what works well. Let me show you one that I was hoping was going to work well and it just didn't turn out that way. The problem with this is there's just not enough color to be had in the in the photo. So I'll speed this up. I'll go through the same process, speed it up. We'll go eight times. I'm going to add my Gaussian blur over here. Top line of the Gaussian blur, I'm going to add a mask. Again, we're going to do the shape mask out to make it a rectangle here hit this link again invert the masks and now everything in the middle is clear and everything outside that is blurred out reduce the blur a tad do a command six bring up the color looking at the saturation and if I just bump this up this shot was like at high noon so even if I put this thing at like a hundred, it's it's just I'm not close enough to the action. So that's where my point earlier in the video where I said the angle of the video is very important. So the, the things that are of, of importance are first is the speed. You want to make it look like a time lapse video. The second is the uh, the height or the angle of the drone. So in this case, I am 75 to 100 feet in the air, but I'm just not that close enough to, to the action. So I'm looking kind of almost straight out instead of kind of peering in down at the you know at the the scenery or the scene that you want to create. So guys, that is all there is to the tilt shift effect. It is super simple. You can pick it up on one try and then just get better and better at it. So let me know in the comments what you want to use tilt shift for. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear what kind of ideas that you have to do the tilt shift effect on. You can do it on any kind of drone video. It works perfectly well. I like the things that have the bright colors, you know, like a construction site, a farm, an amusement park, anything like that. Things at the beach, those would be great places to do the tilt shift effect. What do you guys think? Uh, drop me a comment below. Would love to hear from you guys. Guys, thanks for watching. That's all I have for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.